What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes reporting for duty here. Midweek, we got about a week to go, a little over a week to go before UFC 300 hits us. Cody Brundage is on that card. He's got a big fight coming up against Bo Nickel. What's up, Cody? How are you? I'm good, man. Everything's winding down, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, just getting ready for fight night. It seems like it came up pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how big is the chip on your shoulder because of the fact that the a lot of the attention's on Nickel and not you? Yeah, you know, I don't think I have a big chip because of that. I don't think I really expected to get much of the attention, but I will say uh, I do have a pretty big chip just because I feel like the attention I have gotten has been pretty – disrespectful like there's like a whole video of like chael Sonnen saying my name incorrectly uh you know a lot of people are saying like we shouldn't even made this fight it doesn't even make sense so the bo nickel thing doesn't really bother me because i knew when i signed in the fight him that he would obviously get the the large uh portion of of coverage but i do think it's pretty disrespectful you know i'm a vet this is my ninth fight in the ufc um i'm the best guy he's ever fought it's not even close and you know i i have had to prove myself wins and losses whatever and uh, you know, he still has a lot of unknowns. I don't think he's proved a ton of things in the UFC, but uh, yeah, there's definitely a little chip. Uh, I feel like I've been disrespected, but that's all right. You know, I feel like I fight better that way anyway. And then, of course, there's the odds. We're a Vegas based show. I'm out of the country right now, but I'm most, you know, we live in Vegas, me and my brother. So that's a big part of our world the last 17 years of covering the sports, covering the sports, excuse me. But I'll tell you what. Um, was it what was it goes pride 32 when uh you know the japanese based promotion came to the united states they wanted to expand in the united states yeah and they had a card and so little nog you remember the nogara brothers little nog yeah. was fighting mm -hmm. on that card against uh, Thierry sokuju a judoka from maybe from cameroon the same country that uh francis is from but uh he was a little known not not well known at all, and it looked like a fight featuring and showcasing Little Nog, and the odds on him were what goes plus sixteen hundred, right? Something like that. Yeah, it was like fourteen <laughs> or sixteen. And Little Nog was over two thousand, I guess. They were pretty big, Cody. And yeah, I think I'm, I think last time I looked, I'm like plus eight hundred or something, plus a thousand maybe. So yeah. So I'll tell you what, that's one advantage over covering <laughs> the sport for such a long time is we've seen it all. Hell. Just in the um, the promo they released, you see Matt Sarah gets that knockout over GSP. How how motivated have you been? I guess by I guess the naysayers, the odds. You know, you, you already explained you don't have a chip on the shoulder, but uh, you know the fact that sport uh, the history in sports shows us that anything can happen, man, on the night of competition. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I'm I'm already like super motivated internally, so the odds are it's cool. Um, I've been an underdog, I think, in every single one of my fights in the UFC except for one. Uh, so it's not a role that's very foreign to me, but uh, and it makes the story better, I guess. But you know, I I'm not worried about what everybody else is saying. You know, I used to that really be some that used to be something that was really uh, prevalent in my thought process of like I'm gonna prove all these people wrong. And I would say, like, my last fight, uh, I kind of flipped that narrative and was like, I'm just going to prove the people that do believe in me right and the people that are putting the time in and working with me correct. And, and that's way easier for me and way more fulfilling. And, uh, you know, because no matter what, you won't ever prove those people wrong. I'll go knock out Bo Nickel in the first round and everybody will be like, well, Bo was just too green. He didn't have the experience. Uh, it was a fluke. Like, there'll, there'll be a ton of reasons. It won't be that, like, Cody Brundage is way better than we thought. Cody Brundage is the next champ. Cody Brundage is all these things, right, that they're saying about Bo Nickel now. It'll be more, well, it was a fluke or Bo Nickel isn't as good as we thought. So I, I kind of am at peace with that. And so what other people say and the odds and things like that, it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really influence my my motivation. Uh, obviously, it's cool for the story, but odds are kind of silly because I was I was joking. I have some really highly ranked teammates. You know, Dustin Jacoby, he's a top fifteen light heavyweight. Anthony Smith, former former title challenger, top light heavyweight. Rob Wilkinson's a PFL champ, and I'm like, you know, I go to war with those guys every day, and if if I got booked to fight them, uh, I would have way better odds. You know, according to Vegas and the and the and the sports book. So the odds That's are kind of silly to me, and. Uh, uh, you know, the other thing that's kind of weird to me about the odds, though, I will say is that, like, it, on paper, if you look on paper, I'm a bigger underdog than his last two opponents, and I've accomplished much more than both of his last opponents. So, I don't know if that's people thinking that Bo Nickel is getting that much better and having more faith in, in his ability to get it done. Uh, 
but on paper I'm, I'm one I'm way more dangerous I have more finishes than both those guys have combined wins in the UFC and so uh you know it's a little silly but like I said it doesn't really matter and you know it, like I said it just makes for a better story I go knock out Bo Nickel and that'll be the headline coming out of UFC 300 so uh it's it's an exciting opportunity I hope the odds get even bigger make my friends more money <laughs> so e- excellent point that you made a lot of it isn't just the odds makers when they look at the skill sets and they go, okay, well, we'll make this guy the favorite and, and this person the underdog. <laughs> a lot of it is the anticipated take on fight night. So he is popular. We can't lie about that. He does come with a lot of hype. And, I, you know, those odds may be inflated because of that. So that, that, that you're right. It's not an accurate representation <laughs> of the skill sets between the two. I'm glad – you know that, and, and you realize that, and I, hopefully our audience realizes that as well. I can't believe I didn't think of that because it happens all the time. I mean, Conor McGregor, Cody, was like <laughs> plus 300 against the greatest defensive tactical boxer of all time. Yeah, Floyd was 40 when he fought him or whatever, but we were all – because our, our studio used to be in the Mandalay Bay Sportsbook. We would stare at that and go, that's like free money. We wanted the MMA guy to win. That's our guy. Right. But – we had to be real, you know. I imagine Floyd coming over to MMA. We'd probably laugh at him too. So a yeah, lot of it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting the way the odds go because you know you've seen fights that I feel like are much closer, or like we just recently saw it with like uh, Saint Denis, right? He's a favorite against Dustin Poirier, and I think Saint yeah. Denis is a great fighter, mm-hmm. but Dustin Poirier is one of the best lightweights of all time, you know. And and people, it's like recency bias, right? They watch what he did in his last fight, and they're like, "Man, he's the new guy. He's taking over." And they kind of forget, like, well, experience plays a big role. This guy's been through it. You know, he's been through the wars. And uh, my record's not shiny and, and perfect, but, uh, you know, I've been in the UFC for longer than I was out of it. So, you know, I had to grow up in the UFC and, and take my lumps. But a lot of that is positive moving forward, right, to, to fight these new guys, these up-and-coming guys. And, uh, yeah, so I'm not worried about the odds. I think I think it's awesome because it's going to be a great story when I go knock him out, right? I'll be one of the biggest underdogs to ever win, and uh, that's cool. But, yeah, I don't think it's really a representation on how close the fight is. Cody Brundage, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. He fights Bo Nickel on the main card next Saturday. So April the 13th is when this fight card goes down. UFC 300, historical UFC fight card uh because of the big round number, how stacked it is, all the talent that's on it. Goes and I will be doing a watch along for the whole entire card starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. These guys are on the main card. That's the part you pay for. So uh, I don't think you can complain this time. It's as stacked as it's ever been. Goes, what do you have for Cody Brundage? Hey, Cody. So in this particular matchup, would you say it's more about you being better than him? Or when you go and watch tape of this guy, can you point out like weaknesses that you just think haven't been exploited to this moment? Well, I think everybody that he's fought so far, um, you know, I don't know this. I'm not in their head, but I feel like everyone he's fought so far has gone in thinking two things. One, they they think like I'll stop all of his wrestling, which I think is a crazy thought. People have thought that with me before coming from a wrestling background. And it's just a hard gap to fill. So um if you spend weeks and weeks and weeks being like, well, I'll just stop his wrestling and then you get taken down. It's kind of disheartening. And then the other thing is, you know, when those guys get in there, um, I think it's pretty clear they know what their role is, right? Like they're a stepping stone for Bo Nickel. And uh, I don't feel that way. Um, I don't feel like I'm a stepping stone and I don't, and I'm not worried if he takes me down because I know I can get back to my feet and I know where I have advantages. So I feel like my mindset's just different than uh, some of his past opponents. And uh, that leads to a more competitive fight for sure. Do you think the UFC may have put too much pressure on him? You know, it's main card, UFC 300, you're his toughest opponent. Do you think that could have maybe gotten into him a little bit? Uh, You know, I I think he has that invincibility uh, of, like, his confidence. You know, I don't think his confidence will be shook because nobody's really shook his confidence. It's on me when we're in there, like... So leading into the fight, I don't think any of that pressure really bothers him. You know, he's he's grown up in big big-time environments. I think, you know you don't win that many national titles unless you're a money time guy, right? Under the lights, he can get it done. But uh, it also helps that he's never been hurt. He's never been cracked. He's really never even been hit. And, uh, you know, it's my job to put him in a spot that he's uncomfortable with. And uh, if you watch any of my fights, win or lose, you know, if people stay on the feet with me for an extended period of time, uh, they usually get hurt. So uh, 
you know, that's also something that's a little different in this fight. I don't think, you know, his last fight, he fought a guy on a week's notice who just fought at 170 and honestly could probably fight at 155. He's a smaller guy. Uh, so the da danger threat wasn't there. And then before that, he fought Jamie Pickett, who's never finished anyone in the UFC. Uh, I don't think he's even ever hurt anybody in the UFC. So when you're fighting and you're not worried about getting hurt, you know, it's you can kind of fight a little more free and there's less anxiety. There's less nerves. Uh, he doesn't have that luxury with me because if I hit him, I'll hurt him. And uh, he knows that whether he'll say it or not. He knows that because that's just proofs in the film, right? Everyone I've ever fought, uh, if they stay on the feet with me for a long time, they they get clipped. So, uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, the, the, he doesn't have the pressure from the UFC, but the pressure has to be brought to him. You have to give him some adversity. And, you know, that's what I've been working the last 14 weeks and, and four and a half years on top of that to, to do. So uh, I'm excited for it. Cody, this is obviously a massive card. And top to bottom, you know, there's so many former champions on it. Um, do you feel like with the bonus structure the way it is, do you think it, it's going to be fair? Like, do you feel like everybody has an equal chance to get a bonus on this night? Would, would stopping uh, Bo Nickel get you a bonus, do you think? I mean, I feel like if, you know, biggest underdog in UFC history goes and finishes the dude, it's got to be bonus worthy, right? But I feel like the UFC also does a really good job of like if it's a huge card and there's a lot of finishes and it's a, and they do a good job. You know, when we were in Austin, there were so many finishes on the card and everyone who got a finish got a bonus. So the UFC does a pretty good job of taking care of guys in terms of like we're not going to just limit this to four bonuses if there's people that are are worthy outside of that and uh especially on the big the big cards the pay-per-view cards the cards where there's a gate and there's people so uh i think there's probably equal opportunity i would imagine that all the finishes are going to get bonuses i don't know that but if it's a banger card i, I feel like uh the ufc will handle that you know they, they do they usually do a pretty good job of that that's what it should be every single fight card every finisher should get a bonus they have the budget to do it it's something i've stated for the last five years i think because they do it sometimes and not others i've seen them do it for fight nights just because dana's in the mood the crowd is rocking and rolling he just feels like he wants to be generous and then i've seen pay-per-views that have sold out and done well and they just stick to their four you know it's it's, yeah. it's so unpredictable i don't like it one bit i just think you guys deserve that I think it's great incentive too, you know. And, yeah. Well, I think you could like maybe just make a flat rate instead of showing win, do a flat rate and then do a finish bonus on top of your flat rate. Um, mm -hmm. you know, people always say, like, well, if we did if we got rid of the win bonus, then people wouldn't fight as hard. But anyone that's ever been in the cage or been in a fight, you're not gonna fight less hard because you're worried about your money. I can tell you the last thing I'm thinking about when I'm fighting somebody is how much I'm getting paid if I if I win or lose, right? Like you're trying to you're trying to survive and and, and make it happen. And uh yeah, so I don't I don't think that would be an issue. And then like you said, throw a uh finish bonus out there and and the incentive is huge to to go get that. So there's some things they could do. But I, I do think this card's such a big card. There's so many notable people on it. And you know the thing is like with all those champions, obviously a lot of talent, but most of those guys are finishers, right? And so you're in a, you have a lot of fights that are like kill or be killed type fights. Cody Garbrandt, Davis and Figueredo, both those guys are killers. They both find finishes. That's first fight of the night, you know. So you're assuming there's probably gonna be a finish there. My fight, you know, I have uh almost all my wins are finishes, all of Bo's wins are finishes. You'd imagine there's gonna be a finish in that fight, you know, and there's a, and same thing with like Jamal and Alex Pereira. Most of those guys both those guys big yeah. finishers. And so uh It'd be crazy to only do four because I feel like there's gonna be a ton of finishes. I think it's I think it's gonna be a crazy card. Obviously, you know, the the room for error as you as you move up and have all these champions and ex champions fighting is, is not very high. So uh it should be a pretty exciting card. I agree. I think it's gonna be a lot of finishes. I think everyone's gonna come out and I mean look, there's a lot of talent, a lot of ranked talent, a lot of former champions. And there's going to be pressure to perform, I imagine, as well. This is just a, it's a historical card. What did you think of the promo? It came out about a week ago, and I, I think it's a masterpiece, man. I thought it was really, really nice. What did you think of it? Yeah, I thought they killed it. You know, I feel like uh, one thing that it sets the UFC apart, I don't even know if, like, because they always talk about well, we have so much talent, and I think we have a lot of talent. We probably have the most talented roster. Obviously, I'm biased, but I feel like the thing that sets the UFC apart from every other organization in the world more so is their production and uh, the way they can put together a card, the way they can put together hype for a card. And, you know, everyone knows when UFC 300, 
you might not even be watching it, but everyone knows when UFC 300 is happening. They know who's on the card. They know what to look forward to. And like some of these other promotions, it's just you don't even know who's fighting or where they're fighting or what time it's fighting. So, uh, you know, obviously the the UFC 3 promotion has been huge. I'm sure it'll be even bigger the week of and they're going to do a bunch of stuff the week of. But, um, yeah, it was super cool and, and dope and, you know, just cool to be a part of, too, and, and be like, man, I'm going to be on that. I'm not going to be watching that. I'm going to be on that. And, uh, you know, I was, I've was i been a fan of the UFC before I was ever a fighter and ever even thought I was going to be a fighter. So to be a part of something uh, so big and, and have such a great opportunity to really leave my mark, too. It's not even like I'm just a fight. Like I said, I go handle business against Bo Nickel, and I'm one of the biggest headlines coming out of the card. And, you know, that's how you become uh, a star, and that's how you, you grow in the sport and build your brand. And, uh, yeah, it was super cool, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Defend your spot in the main card we asked john anik this you know should bo nickel be featured on the main card and i'm going to be honest with you because we're the one that asked him the question that's how i asked it not to be disrespectful to you or anything like that but it was just because we imagine you know and i imagine you'd agree his name just carries a lot right oh for sure but what, what how would you defend both you and Bo deserving to be on there? And he he agreed with it. He was a strong proponent of you guys being on there. He he likens Nichols' popularity and rise to Hamza Shemaev's. I disagree just because um I like I, I'm a fan of other sports, and when you sign a big coveted free agent and put him in against a fr- former champ like Kayla Harrison, I think you know you invest that money, man, you might as well bring them on. I think that's what they did with. Eddie versus Cerrone, mm-hmm. Chandler versus Hooker, Askren versus Lawler. You know, I don't remember them getting buried on an undercard, but go ahead. No, yeah, I agree. And uh, I don't know if there is much defense, right? Like, I, I know I'm on the main card. Like, I I, uh, I could joke and be like, you know, I, I carried Bo Nickel to the UFC 300 main card, but I know that's <laughs> not the case, right? I, I know uh, he's the reason we're on the main card. Uh, I'm happy to be on the main card, obviously. And, you know, all the fans complaining, I'm like, at the end of the day, what that means is you get one fight that you really want to watch. Because if our fight sucks so bad, it shouldn't be on the main card. That means one fight that you think should be on the main card, you're going to get for free. Uh, mm. So, it, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me because I'm like, well, you're getting one a fight that you think is better anyway. You get it for free if you didn't want to buy the pay-per-view, right? So, uh, but I, yeah, I mean, I do think he has a lot of star power. I would say that he, I wouldn't compare him to really Hamzat because Hamzat, nobody really knew him until he showed up and, and fought back-to-back days right like Bo Nickel I would compare him more to like a Alex Pereira Alex Pereira came from kickboxing and brought a bunch of kickboxing fans to watch his fights in MMA right because he had built such prestige in this other sport and and a following in this other sport that they wanted to watch him when he made the transition to MMA and and Bo's kind of similar that he has a ton of prestige and it's a big following uh from his success in in college wrestling and and those guys are going to tune in and, and watch him uh when he's fighting so you know he had a huge following and, and that, that always is what the UFC cares about. They want eyes on their pay-per-view. They want people to buy. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, obviously Kayla Harrison, Holly Holm, that's a great fight, former champ versus other, uh, organizations champ and, you know, Olympic champion. But if you ask me who's going to get more eyes, Kayla Harrison or Bo Nickel, I think it's probably going to be Bo Nickel. Right. So at the end of the day, it's, it's a business decision. And I think, that's what they thought would I thought I think the lineup they put up for the main card is what they think would get the most buys because you know that's the thing they care about at the end of the day. That's true. Do you think he's overlooking you? Um not just from what we talked about earlier, but um and and you made a great point too. You both are finishers, so that that could let spark up the the main card pretty good. You have an 80% finishing rate. He's got a high finishing rate as well. Um, but do you think he's overlooking you? Like I, I know he's been chirping at Jordan Burroughs, right? And and then they're gonna ask him other questions about like his future. He's already thinking about winning titles. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he's definitely overlooking me. He said in interviews, you know, I'm not worried about Cody Brundage. I'm worried about what's next. And you can go back and try to be like, no, I'm focused on this fight. But once you put it out there, you know, that's just what that's what it is, right? You said what you really think and that's fine. I hope he continues to overlook me because um, wins, losses, whatever in the UFC, there's, there's never been anybody that's just run through me uh, ever. Right. That hasn't happened. And I fought some really dangerous dudes and, and talented guys. And 
Uh, you know, when you look at this matchup, you, you can't say without a doubt and definitively that Bo Nickel is the, the toughest fight I've, I've had in the UFC. Uh, and you can't say without a doubt that I'm not the toughest fight that he's had, right? Like, so uh, he can overlook me, and I know he is. He's worried about Hamza. He's worried about Jordan Burroughs, which has nothing to do with fighting, right? Like, that's just a weird beef in general. Uh, but at the end of the day, the more he overlooks me, the better it is for me. So uh, I know he is, but that's all right. You know, it's uh, just more fuel for the fire, and uh, he can't overlook me when we're in the cage. About 15 minutes ago in this 20-minute interview, you mentioned something along the line of knocking him out in the first round. I don't know if you were creating a scenario or what, but does that happen to be like what you've envisioned on how the fight could possibly end? Like you, you want to get to work pretty quick with this guy? I mean, we're both fast starters. Um, I feel like everyone's kind of let Bo Nickel just run downhill, right? They stand in front of him and they worry about his wrestling. And I don't, I don't know if my game plan is knock him out in the first round. Honestly, I feel like – uh, we got to try to, obviously that's everyone's goal, right? Get a first round finish. But, you know, I'm not worried about if he takes me down and, and wins the first round, right? That's not going to throw me off my game. And uh, I just got to make it difficult for him, right? I got to make the takedowns hard. I got to make when he's on the ground, controlling me hard and then get to my feet and continue to hit him because he's never been hit and, and make him decide if he actually wants to fight. Cause it's easy winning, right? Winning fighting is the best uh being the hammer is the best but he's never had to be the nail and he doesn't even know how he'll respond to that um and that might take you know one or two rounds but i feel like i i do feel like i get him out of there like i said i'm a finisher and uh it might just be a little bit more of a war of attrition and you know accepting like okay yeah he's an amazing wrestler he'll probably get one or two takedowns but i'm gonna get back to my feet put the pressure on him and, and hurt him and uh eventually i feel like I, I get him out of there for sure i want to thank you so much for Hopping on Junkie Radio with Goz and I. We really appreciate your time, Cody Brundage. Good luck, man. I know there's a, just a few workout sessions left and the the weight cut, and then you get to have a, a bunch of fun, man, and maybe you might create some history um, <laughs> because of the high-profile you know, spot on the card, on, on a high-profile car, uh, uh, fight card. So uh, we wish you the best, man, seriously. And thanks for the time. And it, it's I, I think you're going to make a lot of fans just from this interview. You. Really, really grounded fella. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. All right. Take care, man. We'll talk to you. You guys, too.